honestly, I'll that that will be more um, of a temptation not to go if you if you're not with me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Only because you know this is like sexuality. Talking about sexuality through a, through a biblical lens is your thing, um, and so I was just hypothetically. I would just prep you. Yeah, we, we would I, know, have- <laughs> I, was, I was hypothetically using myself, yeah. but I don't even think that God will tell me to go. I was just, <laughs> honestly, because it's not my thing. I talked to Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and Hebrew Israelites. Like, I don't even know how to like it. We just did all of this. And you talk about something, yeah, I probably wouldn't even go. Hi. Hello. That was really awkward. How are you? That was an awkward been a while hey guys we gotta get back into the groove of things. Do you ever see somebody you ain't seen in a long time and well i get awkward because it's like oh i i know we used to know each other but it's not like we cool now and so i'm not gonna give you all the energy i gave you in high school so what makes that awkward i don't know it just makes me uncomfortable wow because i have this like it feels like maybe you think i should come with the same energy and so now because there's some incongruence between your expectations and my inner reality I'm I'm uncomfortable now. The the life of a of an introvert is so intriguing to me because for me I don't know. I don't know if that's introversion. It's just Jackie. It might be. Yeah, you're an interesting person. But is that what you felt when uh, when the camera started rolling? No, I was just mimicking. You felt like our audience. I was, I was, you haven't seen them in a while. It's been like, a while. I don't so know y'all no more. I was I was mimicking how I. Anyway, she hey, don't know me no more. Hey guys, what how up, are y'all? you? How y'all doing? We missed y'all. I didn't miss you. Wow. But I don't I, I I don't know them. But that's cool that you missed them. I miss them. I miss them sharing the podcast every week saying how much I it miss, blessed them. I miss this. You miss me? This. You miss me? <laughs> this. The mics and talking with you about yeah, Christian you, things. I'm saying, but it's okay for you to just say I miss you. I'm with you all the time. You so, miss me in this capacity. No, I miss this. You Nick miss Rowe. being close to me. No, you're trying to make it. You're trying to. You're trying to do things that ain't ain't don't need to be done. You love me. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Vulnerability. Today, um, we're gonna talk about same sex marriage. Ooh, wow. Gonna come out swinging, you right? Know? Right. Because into it. this was probably two weeks ago. We were outside of this church that we were visiting. And I think I was telling you about the recent controversies around Alistair Begg. Alistair Begg is a preacher teacher that I respect and and listen to a lot. And he made some comments uh, where he was encouraging a grandmother to attend her transgender, I guess, grandchild's uh, wedding as an act of compassion and to bring a gift. And like the evangel and what you call them evangelicals Evangelical, yeah the ev- evangelical world went up in arms they they done booted Alistair off of radio shows they done, they done removed him from conferences they just was throwing throwing the baby out with the bathwater because it's coming so throw his and, 30 years of ministry out the window it, it's intense and so <laughs> me and Preston got into a conversation just around the subject of same sex marriage or same sex weddings and we thought it would be cool to have it live and we even stopped because me and you was going back and forth i was like let's just pause it yeah and actually do that because we, we we differ that's ultimately the end of the, the yeah, point we, we you know his saying? stance is not my stance we got into but at the same time our stance is 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 the, the same. foundation is the same the foundation is the same but how it's fleshed out is different and i think one of the reasons why the, the situation that situation the other situations like it bothers me so much is because i don't think that it's thought about deeply i think it is very dogmatic um i think it's very like black and white and i i do think that christians aren't taught to think about things in nuance with nuance and so uh yeah so that's the reason why you didn't bother me but the situation seeing it online is just like man and i think that we both you know agree with the way he was treated it was just that the way he was treated was uh crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but I I expect that of people who are particularly in reform spaces. Hmm. They have a very uh tribal, you know, it's either you're with us or you're not kind of energy. Yeah. And so. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 I feel like other spaces move move that way as well, but not like 
we see some. I wanna, and that's I wanna, not shade to reform people. No, it's not. Because I am theologically reformed and I go to a reform seminary. So that means I know what I'm t- talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think that um, some re- re- reform spaces, they do tend to be very tribal. It's like us against the world. And it's not necessarily about theology. And not the, before we even talk about this, one of the reasons why I think it, the Alice Beck situation bothered me so much is because I've seen the same treatment kind of done with us and done with you in some ways. You For know, sure. uh, when you went to go preach at a particular conference, you know, a lot of times these spaces say, man, it's about theology. But when you went to go preach or teach at a particular conference or a particular space, the critique. You talking about it, Propel with Christine Kane? Yeah, Propel, even the thing that you're about to do recently. With Bethel. With Bethel, with mm-hmm. Bethel or whatever. The, the, the issue that people had was that you're attending, that you are on a flyer. Not once are they asking you, Jackie, what is the what is the message? <laughs> if, if 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 the concern is they don't teach right theology or they you know false teachers or whatever, and you have a history of putting out theologically sound books, right. <laughs> theologically sound seminary, uh, right. um, um, Bible studies, right. theologically sound YouTube and right. Instagram, right. right? If 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 the gospel is what you guys are concerned about. Why not come to Jackie and say, Jackie, we know that you have a track record of being theologically sound. We kind of, you know. Um, and not but- even just theologically sound, but countercultural in the way I pre- like it. When have I ever gone into a space and not told the truth? But yeah, Right. Right. And so <laughs> and, and, and that's and that's my point. And people were upset. Not because you you went and your message changed, but right. because you were on a flyer with people that they didn't believe was of us. Yes, because the and, assumption is that there you are partnering with yeah. false teachers. Yeah, and, right. But my thing is, define partnering. If you came out and said, "I, I joined the board," <laughs> but it's like we literally like it's so silly. Like, if, think about it. Like all of our for all of our ministry, we used to do the. Kojic convention every year doing poetry. We used to, it, there is no denomination that we haven't accepted the invitation and our message hasn't changed in the last 13 years. But because y'all have, y'all are a particular camp that doesn't like another particular camp, you see me on a flyer with somebody and you say it's partnering. I have so much to say, but I'm not going to say it because it's I, I, I refuse to let this be a sound bite. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to say, Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. And so I well, I'll say am this. going to do that. Well, and there are plenty of things that I actually do say no to because of, you know, what the partnership or the presumption of partnership could do. You know what I'm saying? But I think there are some things that I feel called to do and I'm going to be well, faithful. Well, I'll do say it. this because I'm your husband and my job is to protect you. Okay. I'm going to say this and we can move on. All right. Because this when, ain't even the topic. Right, right. When The, the, when, the title was not <laughs> <laughs> Jackie but it's, but it's, is teaching but it's, at Bethel's but, but, but it's, conference. But, but, it, but, it's, but it's online when the, when, the, when the concern is not what you're teaching but who you are on a flyer with. We know that a lot in a lot of ways it's not about the gospel. But it's about what tribe you belong to. And I don't think that's biblical. And I think that people need to repent for slander. Okay. With that being said. So what is marriage? I think before we can have a conversation around if we would attend a same-sex wedding, I think we first have to establish what marriage is. Yeah. Because that lays the foundation of everything. Yeah, marriage is an institution, you know, that God ordained between a man and a woman. How do you know that? Because Genesis lets us know that in the beginning, in the beginning, he created male and female and he joined them together as one Uh um, to be one flesh. Mm -hmm. um, And he gave them the the command to tend over the garden, you know, and to cultivate life and to be fruitful and multiply. And we see design from the beginning when it comes to man and women relationship. And so... Uh, can, I, see- can I read the text for you? Yeah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 and 25, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Yeah. Right. And so we see... we see, we I see. to make sure they knew it. there was 
a source for your opinion. Yeah, we see opinion. we see we see design from the beginning, and we also see design in you know coming in the in the the New Testament when God tells us that you know we are to uh, to cling to our wives, right? So we see it in Genesis, we see it you know in the New Testament, and so I think that's what marriage is: it is it is relationship, a union between one man and one woman. Okay. Okay, and so my question for you is: Why do you think? Um, oh, so do you think attending a same-sex marriage is problematic and why? <laughs> you, potentially. So <laughs> What? We didn't talk about this the other day. I think it's because it's your phrasing. As some of you may know, I've had my fight against porn. I've shared my story in the past to let people know that they also can be free from it. Um, Job 31 1 says, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look on a woman with lust. Job is explaining that it's not just important for us to have accountability partners, but to also hold ourselves accountable. And I think Covenant Eyes is a great app and ministry to help us do so. There's a particular war being waged against the souls of men, women, and children, and it involves pornography. It's affecting marriages, our bodies, our minds, and it's even in staring our children and driving people into shame and isolation. Whether we know it or not, pornography is built on and leads to dehumanization, sexual abuse, and exploitation of innocence. Here's a few statistics to make it plain. 56% of divorcees state pornography use as a major factor leading to divorce. 47% of Christian families say porn is a problem in their home right now. 90% of children ages 8 to 16 have viewed pornography online and most while doing homework. And this is why we want to invite you to check out the ministry of Covenant Eyes. For over 23 years, Covenant Eyes has been helping men, women, and families in the fight against pornography with their industry-leading software and resources. Victory by Covenant Eyes is software that fosters online integrity through relationships centered around accountability. With powerful accountability features built in and optional blocking technology, Victory by Covenant Eyes is a tool in the fight to live a porn-free life. Protect your family today by visiting CovenantEyes.com and use the promo code Perrys, P-E-R-R-Y-S, for 30 days free or by clicking on the link in the show notes today. That's CovenantEyes.com and be sure to use the promo code Perrys. All right, y'all. Okay. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't even frame it as is it problematic or not. I would simply say, do I think that attending a same sex wedding is the wisest way to display or show compassion to a same sex couple? Ah, I lean on the, the path of no. Yeah. I, I think there are other ways to display love and compassion. And this is why I think uh, when you go, you got Genesis 2. That says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, da da da, cling to the wife, da da da. We see God is the one who created marriage, mm -hmm. and He created marriage before sin even entered into the world. And yeah. so that that means that He, He really, if He's the originator of it, then He's the Lord of it. He 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 defines it right. Yeah. I've had people say, well, what about like attending a wedding with two unbelievers? The, the fundamental thing that makes marriage marriage is sex difference, yeah. not necessarily religious symmetry yeah. or like similarity. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like not salvation, a man and a woman. So y'all could be two unbelievers or one unequally yoked and stuff like that. I can attend that because you still male and she's still female. Yeah. But I think when it comes to a wedding that is not a wedding, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, I can't go. You, you, you can't go. Okay, let me back up. Okay. Okay. Let me let me explain my thought. <sighs> Come on. The way we got I, time. <laughs> it ain't thirty minutes with the periods no more. It's kind of like an hour and a half with the periods. I think God cares about marriage, mm -hmm. uh, because He created it. That's one. So He He cares deeply about it too. When you get to Ephesians five, you see that Paul says that this mystery is profound, mm -hmm. and, that, and that he's talking about marriage, and that it refers to Christ and the church. Yeah. Meaning. When God created marriage, he created it as a symbol or even a sacrament to reflect God's marriage to what the church would be because of Christ Jesus, right? And so if it's a symbol that then represents the gospel, it's even more important, right? Yeah. Um, because now I want to make sure that I'm honoring this mystery that God made to reflect what his son did. Yeah. Um, so that's two. So all of that kind of gives me a a reverence for mm -hmm. marriage. And then when you add in the fact that to me, 
being present at a wedding can often communicate agreement, mm-hmm. affirmation, yep. support, yep. Um, even covenantal accountability in some spaces. Like my presence here says that I'm going to support, lift up, pray for this union. Yeah. And so to me, my presence in the room can communicate something that I don't actually want to be communicated because I, I can't support it. Yeah. I can't affirm it. I can't. I If I pray for it, I'm praying that God breaks it up i'm not praying that it, it's you get what i'm saying like i can't i can't yeah i can't yeah uh yeah so okay now i'm pretty sure you want to hear my thoughts i know them but go ahead okay they well, do okay well so it's not that i don't agree with everything that you just said right. because i a hundred percent agree with with everything you just said i think some sometimes for me the issue is when Christians approach this issue as if it is utter sin to attend a wedding that's of, of the same sex, like a same sex marriage. When the Bible doesn't say if you go to a wedding or 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 an event that that celebrates same sex love, you're necessarily in sin. Now, I do think that all disobedience to God is sin. Right. And so I do think that if God doesn't want you to go there, like personal conviction, I think that's sin. Right. But I think the issue and I think that we all can agree with is it's it's a it's a wisdom thing. Yes. Right. It's a wisdom issue. Right. Because we it's, already- it's like going to the club is going to the club sin. I'm not necessary. Right. Right. But right. is it wise? It's not. I, yeah. So. Right. And, and the reason why it's not wise is because we've already because we've already established what's what a wedding is and what god calls a wedding right we know that our participation at this event would be in a lot of ways communicating to the public that i agree with this it makes it confusing it makes your allegiance to jesus muddy to some people it has the potential to do that and so you know i think this is this is my own personal conviction because I, I do think that we look at this situation as black and white so when alice bed came out and people was like you're in sin let's take all your ministry off of radio and all of this stuff it's like come on have you thought about this deeply because i think that it's possible and this might ruffle a little feathers right i think that it's possible for a believer to seek the Lord. And I do think that there is a way for the Lord to allow somebody to go to a wedding that's same sex. Okay. So, right? go ahead. I, so, well, you about to ask a question? Just to flesh that out. So, to, to, to paint a picture, right? I'll give you an example. Because of my allegiance to Jesus, because of my convictions, because of my theological principles and truths that I stand on and I live by, if my sister got engaged to another woman and she came to me and said, Would you And his sister, me? his sister's with a man. My sister's married no, to a man. I'm just know. this is hypothetical, right? Press got a gay sister. We ain't never known no, that. No, part. no, 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 no. Did my, she read gay girl? Good or my daughter. brother or my uncle, somebody that okay. I had a deep relationship with came to me and said, Would you come to my wedding? My first, my I know I already know my first instinct would, would be like, no. Right. Because of my beliefs. Right. Right. But at the same time, I think, and the reason why my, 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 my first answer will be no is because I stand on a theological truth and I stand on a principle that, that, that this gospel is true and the world got to like align with what I believe. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so that's, that's what I stand on. But at the same time, even though God, I think God honors that, I also think that God is a relational God who cares deeply, not just about our relationship with him, but our relationship with one another. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think that God is this dogmatic, you know, God in, in heaven just with these dogmatic rules and saying, I, I don't care that it's a wrestle that you are afraid of this relationship being ruined. I do think that God wants us to choose mother and father. Uh, not, he, he doesn't want us to choose mother and father or any other relationship over him because his Bible says so. Right. But I do think he wants us to wrestle because relationship matters, right? And so, for example, right, I think one way in which I can go to a wedding, if I pray and ask the Lord, Lord, do you want me to go here, right? I think it's a possibility that God can say, man, in order for you to go to this wedding, you might have to do some hard things. And I don't think people talk about the hard things as much, right? Because if my sister wanted me to attend her wedding, right, 
for example, I'm getting there. Bear with me. <laughs> and she says, and she says, I will be really hurt and I feel like our relationship would be ruined if I look at my wedding pictures and I don't see you. I will have to do the hard thing and say, you know what? Can we have a private conversation? In that private conversation, I will have to tell my sister, whoever it is, I think the only way I can attend your wedding is if two things happen is if you accept the fact that if I attend this event, I do not consider this event a wedding. I don't consider it a wedding. This is not a wedding in my eyes. I don't care how beautiful your vows are. I don't care how many tears y'all have, right? I don't consider, I don't celebrate this with you. Mm -hmm. And so if you're comfortable with me going there mm -hmm. and me standing in the audience, sitting down in the audience and not considering this a wedding, mm -hmm. okay? So she, if she says, okay, yes, even though you don't consider I still want you to be there. I say, okay, now a second thing has to happen, right? And this is, I will, I will emphasize that this is not for people. This is, this is about my relationship with Jesus. Because I made a, proclet, a, a, a public pro, pro, proclamation to the world that I served as God. Going to your wedding kind of makes that public pro, proclamation muddy. And so if you are okay with me going online and saying, I'm attending this wedding that I don't agree with, that I love this person, but I don't love this event, that I, that I, that I, that I, that I care about this person, but I don't care about this. If you are okay with that, then I, I, think, it's, I, I think potentially, because I think the issue is- But who would ever be okay with that? that that's the thing. Because I think for me- I'm about this. This is just my personal opinion. I'm about having. I'm about doing everything I can to 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 make peace in a relationship without betraying the God that I that I gave my life to. Right. And so my thing is, if a person that loves me is getting married to the same sex, wants me to attend their wedding, I think how you present it to them by saying you want me to bend. And if you want me to bend, you got to bend too. Okay. You got to bend a little bit. I actually bring more heat to me because I run the risk of the people that's gay affirming at the wedding rolling their eyes at me for three hours. <laughs> and I run the risk of Christians, you know, the, the, the Christians who, who will never have a successful relationship, a healthy relationship with somebody um, in same-sex relationship and, and don't even know how to deal with that community, just yelling out hatred and ignorant comments. I run the risk of y'all attacking me. But I, I think that, I think, I personally think that God will honor the fact that I'm honoring him while I'm, while I'm still trying to keep a door open for that person to, to, to come in my life and for me to be a light to them. I think it is honorable. I know that was that was that was a lot. No, that it was, was thoughtful. It was thoughtful because it means you you think. Yeah. Um. I I think it's honorable to say that I will have a conversation about what I believe, where I stand, before or like as an element of if I, if I should go or not. Yeah. Because I do think some people are just prone to just just saying yay or nay without any conversation at yeah. all. And, and, and I think that person deserves that. Yeah. I think that person deserves that. I don't think, and I think a lot of times, and I'm just, this might sound a little harsh. I think a lot of times we just walk too cowardly. We'll, 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 we'll try to, we'll try to, we'll try to be uh, uh, faithful to Jesus while dishonoring people. And I think God wants us to do both. I think he wants us to be faithful to him while at the same time honoring the people who don't even serve him. And so there's a way for us to do both. It's just, it's to say, man, if I come here, do you know what I believe about Jesus and what he says in the Bible? So therefore, I can't agree with that. And because I, I proclaim to the world what I believe, right? I'm, a, I'm, I'm not going to make an ambiguous or, or, or a cryptic message on, online about how I... No, it's going to be very clear. I'm going because I love this person and I want to keep this door of relationship open but I don't agree with this. If you're okay with that. And sometimes, for us to say somebody might not be okay with that, that's true. But we can't say- I think most people would- Most people Not wouldn't. be okay with that. Most people wouldn't be, be okay with I it. Because I actually- Okay, so let me back up. I think I'm all for your first part, which is let's have a conversation about it, you know, how you feel about what I feel, what I believe, da-da-da-da-da-da. Because I think God is faithful 
to potentially bless even those conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when I've encouraged people to, when I've encouraged people in the direction of potentially not going, I've actually tried to encourage the fact that God can use your no. Yeah. God can use your conversation about why you cannot attend to actually do work in people's hearts. And I have evidence, which is, I had a conversation with a young lady once whose sister got engaged to a woman. And she read my book, Gay Girl, Good God, before having the conversation with her sister. And that led her to the conclusion, like, I don't think I can go to your wedding of good conscience. So she called her sister and told her sister that she could not attend the wedding, why she could not attend the wedding, and basically preached the gospel to her sister. The sister got off the phone and repented and canceled the wedding. So stuff like that tells me that God can use the conversation about the no to actually do work. But secondly, I think your point about making a public declaration of what you believe, I just don't think that actually works. I think it does. Why you don't Be- think it works? Because I think it, I think it can come across as shaming. Because let's say we're talking about your sister. People don't know your sister. So now all of a sudden, we know your sister. We know your sister's situation with uh, being gay and getting married and stuff like that. And we know you don't approve of it. When that person was, it's not like the public even knew that. Yeah, but So, so you put them in a position to low-key be embarrassed. Yeah, but, but, but my thing is, I put them in a position, but I gave them the choice. And so it's not like yeah, I, but it's a choice that no one's gonna make. So you 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 end up actually you're just you're not gonna go to the wedding at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So but, no but one's ever my, gonna my, say my, my, my you know is, what? Sure, to your three four hundred thousand followers, please say you're not you're going to my wedding, but you don't you agree don't because that. I'm going to hell. Yeah, you don't know that because some people because because I because I have family members who don't care about what my followers think and who don't even it's not even in my circle who's not even they don't they don't really care like i i i have family members like i don't care what your people say i want you here i i think i have family members that would do that and and would, and would say that but also too as far as But do sh- you think that honors them? Yeah, i think it i think i think it honors them cuz i didn't i didn't i didn't communicate how how i would communicate. Okay, it. tell me how you I, do it. I give think, me an give me an example. Well, i haven't I haven't necessarily fleshed out word for word what i would say but i would do it in a way that would honor them as most as most I can. I won't, I won't say, I think this wedding is an abomination, but I'm going anyways because I love her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use words <laughs> that would even trigger Christians. <laughs> uh, they, they're going to burn in a lick in of fire. In my mind, I'm just thinking about like, I you say- posting a reel <laughs> with like... Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I Jesus culture I wouldn't say music. And, and let me just say this. Let me just say this. I want people, because I think a lot of times <laughs> the culture... <laughs> be quiet, babe. People, I think the culture we- that we live in I think that if you don't come out and speak the exact sentiments of people, not only do they not hear you, but they have the tendency of hearing you saying something completely different. Okay. And so I can pe- I can see people hearing this and say, Preston, you agree with... It's like, I never said that. I actually started off saying my first inclination would be t- to say no because of why I stand biblically. I'm saying, we, we talking about the public thing. I know, but I'm, I, I just want I, I to make that clear because I, I just kind of... I hear people. People hear what they want to hear. But what I'm, what I'm saying is with the public thing, that I would, I, I I would do my best to honor them in the way I communicated, while at the same time letting people know that if someone sees me here, or if the public sees, and it's not even about me trying to you know look a certain way in the public. It's really not about that. It's it's I don't want to confuse people, and so I I do think, I do think that I would try my best to honor 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 the the God that I serve. While at the same time honoring them, but I I do think it's about making your public you know dedication to Jesus not muddy, and so like if if a person really wants me there, I feel like if you really want me there that bad, can you respect you know the foundation that I stand on? Can you can you respect that? And can you respect me not wanting to damage that? Right? Because the issue of going to a same sex marriage is not me being in sin; it's me agreeing with it. And so if I could communicate to the public that I don't agree with it, right? And so that's that's what sin does. Sin makes everything hard. That's what that's what the church has to understand. Right. And that's what that's what unbelievers have to understand. Right. When 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 two people operate outside the way God intended them to, to be, things get hard. Yes. And I don't think that God wants us to run away from the hard things. That's hard. Yes. That's hard. You're making me, you're making me, you're making me go outside of my beliefs. 
Yes. And so if I if if I have to try to figure out a way to do that, I have to do the hard thing. This is very uncomfortable. So is the basis of your potential yes, does it start with you discerning what God wants? Yes. Or is this always gonna be That's a- the reason why I brought up that's the reason why I just brought up, you know, people kind of hear what they want to hear because I want people to understand that first. I will really pray to the Lord. And when and when I thought about this, I thought about the potential of God saying, maybe I'm calling you to do the hard thing because as everybody know, if you ever saw my YouTube channel, I have hard conversations. And I will be going to that wedding anticipating not my family member but the other side of the, the 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 wedding party not too happy with me wanting to have conversations DMing me right it invites more conversations for me to give truth with grace and in in love right um and so you know like I I, I do think that in the same way God can use our no I, I think God can also use our attendance when we're when we like plainly communicate that we don't agree with I think God can use both. I, I think the problem is a wisdom problem. I think that if people think that we agree with it, I think that's when it gets muddy. But I think that if it's a way, right, it's rare. I don't think that the average, I think you're right. I don't think the average person would say, yeah, put me on all your social media and tell people that right. you don't, you know. Right. But if they do, right, if they don't, I can't attend. If they, if they say, I don't want you to do that, I can't attend. And I went in for, I would say, this is not I'm, not, I'm not putting this in your lap so you can say, Oh, uh, you don't you you don't have to go. I'm not I'm not trying to manipulate you. My 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 salvation and my relationship with the Lord means a lot to me. Right. And so I, I think that, you know, if I if I gotta be in, I think you gotta be in a little bit as well. I think what I appreciate again is the amount of like love and wisdom and work and energy it takes to have like hard conversations around this subject. Yeah. Um you know, if it was a family member or even a child, like to just say yes or to just say no without any conversation is easy. Yeah. But I think to kind of lean into the messiness of all the things and the complications and the the weirdness and the awkwardness, I think is the way of love. Yeah. Um, to just commit because we 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 don't like talking. We don't like communicating. Mm-hmm. Like we like, you know. The easy piece. So I'm just saying your first part, I think, should be overemphasized. Yeah. That like talk to your people, process with your people. I even remember uh, a conversation that I had with um, someone who's a lesbian and, and married to a woman. And she was saying how like she just hates how weird her Christian friends acted when she invited them to the wedding where they either ignored her yeah. or like didn't respond and she was like stop being weird and just tell me no like yeah. we straight you know yeah. what I'm saying? not literally but like <laughs> yeah like we're good like yeah. you ain't got to do all of that because it's real convenient to disappear yeah it's, it's actually you're not actually not being bold i think god like i said before i think god wants you to honor him and i think he wants you to honor people i think he wants you to honor him first i think it's okay to even allow people to see the wrestle. Yes. Right? So Come on, now you're talking my language. If I'm about to push back, I think it's okay for wow. people to see, you know, sis, I love you. I love you a lot. I care for you. I want to honor you. You know, I you like, but I'm struggling. And this is why I'm struck. For people to see the humanity, because oftentimes people see the, the they they see the theology. Mm-hmm. But they don't necessarily see the human yes. that like is communicating the theology. So yep. like to sh- see the wrestle mm-hmm. between I want to honor God and I want to honor you and just give me some time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And like, what's I the think pushback? Because cool. I, 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 like I said, I, I embrace hard conversations. I'm ready. Of course for you them. do. Um, <sighs> I was sitting here when you was talking. I was sitting here envisioning myself. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I do have the the luxury of I don't think anybody is ever going to invite me to their gay wedding. I just I don't think that is ever going to be a thing. Yeah, Jackie, be- invite, come on to my gay wedding. We're gonna hand out gay girl good God to all the guests. <laughs> just think, 
<laughs> That's just not a conversation I have to have. Now, depending on the path our children take, God willing, it whatever affections or temptations they experience, they subject that under the lordship of Jesus Christ. That is our prayer and our hope and what we're cultivating. But if ever they go down a path that we don't prefer, then I think I might have a different wrestle. That doesn't mean that my position will change, but I think my po- your position gets weirder when it hits close to home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think where I am now, it's just not something that pe- nobody's going to ask me. But I think I was thinking about if I did attend, how would I feel? I was just, I was just, feel- in my, I felt anxiety in my body and not like fear, but grief. Mm-hmm. Because I think some of the grief is informed by the fact that God delivered me from this. Yeah. Right. And so it, I think maybe maybe my previous context is a large part of why I wouldn't be able to go. Yeah. Because I recognize the amount. I, I, I remember being a slave. Yeah. And so I think it would be, it just would be hard for me to sit here and see people celebrating slavery. Yeah. And I'm a, I call it slavery because Romans does. Mm. Roman says, like, if you are a person who is led by your sins and your passions, then you are a slave to who you obey. Right. And so I am literally seeing slavery being celebrated and we're singing and we're dancing and we're making cheers and we're we're eating food and we're like, this is this is a temple at this point. Yeah. And And so to to me, I, I. my heart can't take, and I don't even want, I don't want people to think that how I feel is how everybody should feel. I'm yeah. just saying I carry a particular grief yeah, and, and, when it comes to that, that wouldn't allow me to have peace. And 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 that's, and that's good that you said that because I think, I think that what, what you're communicating is good because I, I, cause I, I hate when people say, um, it's about your personal convictions. Uh, it is, but it isn't right. I do think that we're all individuals and we all have individual stories that make some things more yes. sensitive than others, right? And so, for example, you know, I'm passionate about, you know, street ministry, but I, it's some things that I can't participate when it comes to street ministry because I've, I, you know, like, like I just, I, I, I can't participate in some things because mm-hmm. it, 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 it just hits close to home or like I, I love to give the gospel to other religions. I couldn't attend a ceremony, you know what I mean, that 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 celebrates false theology in mm-hmm. that way, right? Uh, and so I, I I agree with that. But I think that if the issue is confusing people about what we believe, right, we have to figure out how can we successfully communicate that to the world that we don't agree with this. And I do think that I'm not, I don't want people to think that I'm saying, oh, yeah, like, uh, I'm if, listening to you. I'm trying to find a no, Russell, Russell Morris article. You are good. I don't think I don't think people should automatically say, you know, we should go or we should not go. I think that you should really pray about it and and truly seek the Lord about it. Um, while at the same time sticking to sticking to your convictions. That's what Dang, I, I forgot. I um, I haven't paid my Christianity today little bill, so I can't see the article. Oh, okay. There we go. I did pay it. Okay, so I think I think one thing we're low key hitting at is something Russell Moore kind of explores because Russell Moore did an article for Christianity Today talking about the Alistair Bay controversy and same sex weddings and stuff like that, and he kind of made the point that maybe someone who doesn't attend a same sex wedding could be considered like the weaker brother in First Corinthians, right? Because their conscience cannot handle this type of situation. So I'm gonna read it. He says, I also, so Russell Moore is on the side of he doesn't officiate uh, same-sex uh, weddings. He will not attend one, et cetera. He says, I also realize that my conscience here might be what the Bible would call the weaker one, Romans 14. I just know that weak or not, I can't violate it. I can understand why people would disagree with me and I can see the biblically, biblically reasonable case they would make, which is why I don't expect other people's consciences to be bound by my scruples on a matter that's an inference from scripture rather than a direct and clear command. Does that, does it, does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like I think framing it as one, a conscience issue and therefore an issue that could 
change depending on if you're if you have a weaker con- conscience like I do when it comes to this or a stronger conscience which I think you do because if we're talking about conscience it's to say my conscience cannot handle being in that environment because of the world that I came from right Ooh. your conscience can because of the perspective that you have about your love for your sister yeah yeah hypothetical sister yes and you know what I feel like the lord just dropped this on my spirit. come on here I feel like the lord just dropped this what on did my he spirit. say and I, I want people to, to hear me when I say this. And this is not me tr- making an excuse to try to defend the position that I just laid out. I feel like the Lord, when I, when I thought about this issue deeply, because the Alice Begg situation and other situations like and I've had this question so many times on Q&As and stuff like that. Uh, so I thought about it deeply. I, I think one of the reasons why I land on the side that I land on, um, I think God is kind of showing me right now is because I'm an evangelist. Hmm. I think my heart as an evangelist, I think in order to be an evangelist, you have to have hard conversations. You have to put yourself in difficult situations, even for those hard conversations to even happen. Hmm. And I do think that if I came from the 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 gay community, hmm. I probably would feel different, but yeah. I don't, yeah. right? Um, and I think God in a lot of ways has prepared me for that type of heat, right? For that type of smoke. Because I think I will get smoke from a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will honestly go to, go, go to that wedding if, if they agree, anticipating conversations and actually excited about it. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so I do think you, you have to be honest about how God has made you, what, where God has brought you from, and also what he's called you to. Mm. Right, right. Um, but also at the same time, all the, regardless of what he's called you to, how he's made you, what he's brought you from, and all of that, all of us making it clear to the world what we believe mm-hmm. and why we believe it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, if I ever attended, it wouldn't be a, a situation where it comes up on the news and people asking me a question. Why did you attend? They don't know where I stand and why I stand. And some might have some. My, some might say. Uh, Preston, you shouldn't have went. Okay, but you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be confused about what I believe, mm-hmm. and you ain't gonna be confused about about like the conversation that I had when people with, with people while I was there. You, that's what that's what you're not gonna be confused about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the bigger the larger issue. I think that's what makes it problematic mm. is that it's confusing when yeah. we attend something that clearly goes against God's word. And so I do think that my heart as an evangelist and my heart for people in that way drives me to at least consider praying about should I go. That's interesting. Um, and so I think that's kind of, you know, one of the reasons why I stand yeah. why I stand. Oh man. That's good. I don't really know what else to say. Yeah. There's a lot to say. I, I, I just want to say this and I, I actually want your opinion on it. Because I don't want to harp on this, but I, I do think that um was it um uh, I think it was Ray Orland's son. Mm-hmm that we watched when the Alice the Bag thing situation came out. And uh, what's his name? It's either Gavin or Dane. Gavin, uh, we'll follow both of them because <laughs> the, the Orland family are just just great, golly men um, and women. Um, but one of the things that he said was um, most of the people that critiqued or tried to cancel Alistair um, are not even tested in ministry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And um, and they 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 haven't dedicated their life to even preaching the gospel in this capacity, mm-hmm. right? And so, for what 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 would you say to the people who would try to cancel everything that a person has done for years because of this one fundamental and theological disagreement? I don't even think it's a theological disagreement because theologically he has publicly came out and said, you know. Um, that he agreed that he disagrees with same sex marriage. Yeah. Uh, he he had he had a famous quote that was all over TikTok before this happened. Says, you know, we love, um, uh, but we can't accept, uh, yet you know our our um, gay friends and stuff like that. And so, what would you say to people who are just so quick to cancel a Christian in that way? It's so much. Um. Because I, th- I think, 
I think we are just guarding ourselves from false teachers and false teachers that are coming up from among us. Mm. Right. So I, I think people just have their have a really keen eye to can I still trust you? You mm. know, some of that is just because our trust has been affected by the amount of pastors that have fallen the amount of pastors who at one time were theologically solid for 10, 15 years, and now they seem to be moving in a direction that is accommodating sin, uh, particularly around sexual ethics. So I think we're just on guard from who we can trust. So I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. I think underneath it, though, I think especially those who live in more theologically uh, dense spaces such as Reformed theology, like Presbyterians, blah, blah, blah. I think cats like that have to guard themselves from one, lacking love, mm -hmm. lacking long suffering and being hypercritical. Yeah. I think if that's where you lean, if you lean in that direction, then you need to even be on guard against yourself yeah. and how that could show up and how you treat other people. Yeah. Because I feel like when you look at even... Uh, when Peter was out there, you know what I'm saying? When the Gentiles and them showed up and he like, I ain't going to eat with the Gentiles. I'm going to eat with the Jews. I ain't been over here thinking that I'm being defiled and all this stuff. And Paul came and rebuked him yeah. to his face. So it yeah. don't mean if a brother is tripping or doing something off, you don't rebuke him. Right. But we don't we don't stay there. Yeah. Even P Peter wasn't canceled. Yeah. He was challenged and then we moved on. Facts. Facts. And I, I do think... And we're rebuking people we don't even know, for God's sake. Yeah, and I, I do think that if you find yourself in camps or circles and the people that you find yourself around, they're more known for what they're against than what they're for, I think that you will have a deeper temptation just to cancel, cancel somebody the first time you disagree with them. Because there's a lot of rhetoric of what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. And I, I, I made a reel about this uh, recently. There's just people out there who are just getting money, getting fame, getting attention of just complaining about what's wrong all day. And so the first time we see somebody that does something that kind of goes against what the first thing we do is they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. And we're not even taught how to talk deeply about these things to even wrestle through it. Right. And so I, I do think what you just said about love is, is, is key. This is the reason why the first thing that we should do is love. It's like, how can we, how can we have love, Alistair Begg, in this situation? Well, I do have a, I do have a, a thought. What's the thought? I, because if someone makes a public statement, I don't think you're, you're necessarily wrong to make a public rebuke or denounce, de, like denounce that, right? I was getting there, it's, but okay, you, you can. It's the way we Yes, do it. that's what I was just about to say. Because my thing is, I would love for for I would have loved to see um for those who disagree with all that getting for them to get understanding. Nobody came and asked questions. Nobody came and said, "Okay, what do you mean by this? Can we talk about this?" Um, you know, it it was just cancel, cancel, cancel. You're a, you're Well, some people ask questions. Well, well, I'm not saying some. I'm just saying the the overall what we saw just people canceling them, some of his um, sermons were stripped off of certain, you know, platforms as if it wasn't theologically true. Uh, now, if he came out and said, I don't think that same-sex marriage is sin. Right. You know, I I, I, I disagree with Paul, right. you know. Uh, then I can say, man, theologically and foundationally, we don't believe the same thing. Right. And you are showing signs of false te mm -hmm. teaching, right? But he didn't do that, mm -hmm. right? He 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 went a different way, contrary to to how you would would have went, and so like that, I think that invites a conversation, not a cancellation. And so I, I I don't think that we love people well when we're just always so excited to talk about what we disagree with, and we don't want to have real genuine conversations with the people that we disagree with. I have a text. Paul says, chapter five, verse one. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters in all purity. Sh surely he's not saying 
that just because a man is older or an elder is in a position of authority, that that means he, he can, he can go without rebuke. But I think who they are and what they represent, what it like, if someone is a father in the faith, a mother in the faith, even a sister or a brother in the faith, you, you challenge them in, in a way that honors who they are. Yeah. Right. For sure. So if you are my sister, how do I show up and honor you? Absolutely. Even as I correct you, if you're a father, how do I show, like, how do I correct you right. in a way that honors you? Because how many, and I think I, that's what, what's not happening. Because how long has he been in ministry? I mean, longer than we've been alive. Well, longer we, we, longer than we, we've been alive. And also he has taught theological truth for a very long time. Now, in 2024, he comes out with one thing that we don't agree with, not necessarily saying he agrees with sin, but the way we would attend something that is sinful, right? It's okay to disagree. I just think this, this cancel culture is so whack. It's so whack. We just, like, Jesus wouldn't do that. Like, he won't, Jesus would not move the way y'all moving. Because he didn't, right? Mm -hmm. He had people... He told, he told, he told uh, Peter, get behind me, Satan. But he ain't cancel him. <laughs> he yeah, still I, rock with. I, like, as a matter of fact, he said, Peter, I'm going to build my church on you. know what I'm saying? And so, like. If, if we want to say that Jesus canceled people, he canceled actual wolves. Yes. The, the, right. The, the actual false teachers and the actual Pharisees who are saying things that weren't true and living lives that were deceptive. And so I, I just I just think we have to be careful. Let's be we move in the direction of slander. But I also want to affirm our commitment to truth because I feel like we have to balance it. Yeah. Because you sure. have some people who are on the side who who don't rebuke nothing. Yeah. Don't correct nothing. Don't challenge nothing because they they may not be at like whereas a person who's bold might actually just be in the direction of being self righteous and harsh a person who is quiet might actually just be a coward. Right. Right. And so we don't want to be either. We yeah. just want to be faithful. Be what faithful. does faithfulness look like? Yeah. And it looks and like, that's it, the question. it looks like loving God and loving people as so. yourself. Now, would you, would, what will be really interesting is that if you're invited to a same sex wedding, knowing that I'm not going, even just that dynamic, yeah, I think that if I think that because if, that that'll be a part of like the conversation at the dinner party. Where's Jackie? Yeah, I think I think in her uh, pajamas. I think uh, sipping a latte. Yeah, in front of Romans. As wife. your as, as your leader, I'll be praying. Right, right. As I will your, be fasting for you. Right, right. That you that like the the wedding would be a mission field. Can I talk, please? As you eat the meatballs. Okay. Talking to any Mormons that might have been. Oh, right. <laughs> they would be there. As, as your leader, I don't think that I, I don't see myself ever, ever trying to pressure you to be in a situation that might be uh, emotionally damaging, right? So, like. Uh, emotionally damaging. Not, not emotionally damaging, but like uh, you said. It just that, goes against my. But you said you would be vexed being. I'd be grieved. Grieved. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Like. I, I would I, I wouldn't want to put you in a situation that will that will grieve you in that in that way. Yes. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, honestly, I that that would be more um of a temptation not to go if you if you're not with me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Only because, you know, this is like sexuality, talking about sexuality through a through a biblical lens is your thing. Um and so I was just hypothetically. I would just prep you. Yeah, we, we would. I, know, have... <laughs> I, was, I was hypothetically using myself. Yeah, but I don't even think that God will tell me to go. I was just <laughs> honestly, because it's not my thing. I talked to Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and Hebrew Israelites. Like I don't even know how to like it. We just did all of this, and you talk about something. Yeah, I probably wouldn't even go. No, no. When I when I when, when I was using myself as I, 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 I like I was I was using myself. <laughs> For That's other a plot twist. Yeah, for other people. Yeah, because, yeah, because yeah. because I, because I talked, you were standing in proxy because I talked about evangelism, right? Yes, right. But if I was well versed in like like sexuality, sexuality, yeah. I, you know, I, I feel like I will be equipped because it's one thing. It's one thing to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Come on here. And it's another thing to be and to be equipped and ready. Uh -huh. like, like I'm I'm ready for the smoke always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't afraid of no conversation, yeah. but I don't dibble and dabble in stuff that I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff is changing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause a lot of a lot of stuff be changing. Yes. And I wouldn't even know how to properly talk about certain things. And I don't think that because I didn't come from that community, and because I don't engage with the community a lot, I don't think that I would be able to be as sensitive 
and well, as thoughtful in my conversation. Well, well, I actually, but, I'm, but I feel like if you are, and if you're not afraid to have those conversations, you should pray and ask the Lord how should you go about it. I will say this: I think that actually, before we close, because we're going long, I think that brings up a significant point because you began by saying you would go because you like what would even motivate you to have the conversation about if you should go is right. you praying and discerning God's will. Absolutely. I, I think we often have to be reminded that a part of discerning God's will is having conversations and praying with other people. Yeah. Right? That's good too. So yep. like trying to discern God's will in isolation doesn't mean it won't happen. It just means there's always the potential that it's actually not that, a sound. That's really good that you brought that up because yeah, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't say that, but I I definitely would not I don't do you know that I don't do anything without calling my leaders, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? My my mentors, Brian Dow or Eric Mason, I don't do anything. And so I definitely, after I pray, I would I would call men who I know know the Bible and who I know know the Lord. Because mm -hmm. some people know the Bible, but they don't know God. Uh, I, I, I I know men that, that know both, mm -hmm. right? Let, let me share something real quick. Um, and so I called them first. I had a situation where I was invited to do this ministry engagement with people who I, I disagree with, maybe on all levels. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wrestling with, if I go, I can present the gospel in a space where the gospel is not often presented. Mm -hmm. Or if I opt out, then I'm able to just not even make any public association with me in this ministry. Yeah. right? And in me trying to discern what God wanted, I had to talk to people. Yeah, And so I called about four people who are older than me, who have been in ministry for a long time to process with me about the direction I should go. And I ended up coming to the conclusion that it would not be wise for me to attend this thing. Right. Yeah. I think the same should apply to even stuff like weddings, which is mm -hmm. you could have a conviction like your conviction is landing on love and compassion. My conviction is landing on like, nah, I need to like maintain a public allegiance to Jesus and I can't go here because it'll violate my conscience, right? I think both of those lean in the direction of some type of biblical truth. And so oftentimes you need some wise counsel to come in and say, which part should I lean into? Yeah, You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I'm not, especially if you're a person who's hyper compassionate, mm -hmm. your yes is going to be easy naturally. Yes. If you're a person that's, that's hyper judgmental, your no is going to be easy naturally. That's and really so good. having... A sounding board that can move you in a wise and direction. What you just said just reminded me of this, and I, I want to keep beating the dead horse. I just want to, I, I just want to re reemphasize this. Even the even the the wrestle that I that I that I stated of why I would even consider or why oh I think God might say you can go is not me being new back. It's not huh? me. Where did that come from? Because you know, like people who don't have a backbone, they call them. Did you grow back. up hearing that? Yeah, my my my, my grandma used to say that. Don't be a noodle back. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Like, have some backbone about yourself. Got it. Right? Uh, it's not me being like, like me be, trying to be a people pleaser. Right. It is, it is, it is me trying to, my best to honor the Lord. At the same time, keeping the door open in a relationship so that I can be a light to that person. Yes. Right? And I, I think like that because I'm an evangelist, right? And right. so I'm always trying to be a light to the people in my life, people in the streets, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And so I'll say this, you know, like make sure that you don't, fall on two sides of the extreme, super critical and judgmental when yes. you just mean. Yes. So it's easy for you to say no because that's not godly boldness. You just mean. Yes. Um, or just super, super cowardly and just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like want to just please people. And mm -hmm. so you you feel the the need to change your theological views just so this person won't be mad at you. I think God has a problem with that as well. I do think that God is going to use us how he has uniquely made us. And I think because God is a, a, a father and it's a, a Christianity is a personal relationship with, with, with this God, mm -hmm. he won't put us in situations where we're not ready to handle, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I do think that we have to take that into, into consideration while at the same time bringing godly people into your life for wise counsel and for them to say yes and no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't attend this. Yeah, before we go, I think I would, in, I would encourage everyone to know what the Bible says mm -hmm. about sexuality, know what the Bible says about what marriage is, know what the Bible says about marriage being a reflection or a symbol that represents the gospel, uh, know what the Bible says about the conscience, know what the Bible says about sin, because I think 
having a solid theological f- foundation actually anchors us in knowing the best decision or path to go, right? And so if anybody is listening like, shoot, I, I, I agree with Preston and I agree with Jackie, I don't know what to do. Get in your Bible, get in your word, know what you're you should believe yes. before you then try to discern what you should do. Yeah. And then that's a good go fun, that's a that's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good biblical foundation. Pray. Keep wise, godly people around you. And God will lead you. Yeah. And I'll link some resources in the show notes. Bye y'all. Peace.